Welcome to the Work Hard, Play Hard podcast. My name is Rob Murgatroyd, and I am a former doctor turned lifestyle entrepreneur. Each week, I interview some of the best minds on the planet on the science of achievement and the art of fulfillment. Today's episode is a mini-sode that we call Fried Dates with the Wife. In these mini-sodes, my wife Kim and I deconstruct the strategies that we've developed over the last decade to not only grow personally, but to turn our struggles into lessons and create fulfillment in all areas of our lives. Excuses are over. It's time to live. Let's dig into today's topic. Well, good morning, Kimberly, and welcome to the show. And happy Friday date to you. Happy Friday date to you. It's like my favorite new day of the week. All right. So today we're going to talk about how to apply adult personal development strategies to your children. Now, before you say, but I don't have any kids, you're, I mean, look, evolution says you're ultimately going to have some. Okay. So, (laughs) okay. Just Google Darwin. It's going to be coming. So hold on to this episode because it's going to help you. What are you going to learn? You're going to learn meditation and gratitude practice and how it applies to children. You're also going to learn how to teach them how to change their own state, Tony Robbins style. And you're going to learn how they can use a power pose or affirmation to get them to do things that maybe they're a little bit afraid of. Okay. So let me just sort of set the stage here. I remember when we were in, when we were pregnant and I'm going to say we were pregnant too, because I think I gained some weight (laughs) and we were in a restaurant. We were at a restaurant uh, called uh, F and B, which I think stands for food and beverage in case anybody wants to know. We were sitting there and we were, you know, thinking about this baby that was about to come. And we were like, well, what are the things that we want to make sure that this child has and that we make sure that we instill in her? And we talked about all kinds of things from rituals and holidays um, right up to who we wanted her to be as a person. And a few of these things made it to the list. And we were looking back on it the other night and we were like, you know what? We've actually use the things that we wanted to use. And she's only three. So we're like, okay, maybe this is a good idea to share it. So Kim, let's start with the first one. Let's start with meditation and gratitude practice. Talk to me about some things that you've used with Sophia that have really helped in this area. Just had an idea to lay in bed with her at night. We read her a book, you know, we have this little like rituals that we go through. And I decided why not teach her about gratitude? So, you know, we started slow and we made a ritual that every night she tells us three things that she's grateful for. Then one day I knew she got it. You know, at first it seemed like everything. She would just kind of name everything in the room. You know, my Barbie, my Mickey Mouse, my mommy, like she was just kind of doing it all. But then one day I realized she got it when I said, okay, Sophia, what are you grateful for? And she said, I'm grateful for my heart. And I was like, I don't Mm. even know where that came from, but I was like, you get it. And then a few days later, I asked her and she said, I'm grateful for my whole family. And I remember like pretty much going into the ugly cry after these because it it, it meant so much to me that she actually was getting it. Okay. So let's, let's talk a little bit about uh, meditation and how that, uh, how that functions. Well, you do that one. So why don't you, that's more your lane. Yeah. Okay. So the way I got her to do this was I just had her cross her legs and that's it. And I said, okay, so tonight all we're going to do is just cross your legs and put your hands on your knees. And we called that meditation. So what did that do? It just started the process with something that was fun for her and something that she can do. And then over the next couple of nights, I said, okay, well, now we're going to take your hands. We're going to put them in, you know, that ohm position where your index finger and your your thumb are are opposing each other um, or forming that circle. Um, And we're going to put it on your uh, your knees. And so we just built pieces into this over time. And then um, ultimately we added in the Headspace app um, that... Headspace and Calm both have a children's 
uh, section within their app of very, very short meditations that are like a minute, but they're designed to speak to the kid. And, you know, it's like, okay, now close your eyes, you know, like that kind of thing. Now we can get her to do it. You know, can I get her to sit for 20 minutes? No, but you also can't get me to sit for 20 minutes, I you mean, know? Apple like, did not fall far from Right, but I can get her to do it for two or three minutes. So that's how we do meditation and uh, gratitude practice. Now, let's move on to how we teach them to change their own state. Uh, Kim, this was really your doing, and can you tell them about the snowflakes? Sure. She was having these crazy tantrums, and I was like, there has to be a better way than me yelling at her, putting her in her room, talking to her. Like None of those things were working. So one day, she was really upset and acting crazy. I sent her into her room and I walked in her room and I said, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do something and it's called changing your state. I said, here are these snowflakes. And I just grabbed the nearest thing. I said, I want you to throw these in the air and make it snow. And she said, she started like, you see that little smile, that little like, you want me to do what? So she threw them in the air and she started laughing. She thought it was hysterical. And so we just kind of anchored it there. And it changed her state. And it literally changed her state because she throws them in the air. She thinks it's funny. Guess what? That's a state change. And also the phrasing, we use the phrasing, change your state, because I think that's important as an adult, we can add to that. All right, let's move on to number three. Number three is how to use a power pose or affirmation. I remember that we were... I think this started in uh, Greece. No. No, it wasn't Greece. Okay, where was it? Okay, so this one is super clear to me. (laughs) This is not one we actually put on the list when she was uh, in utero. This one was um, a strategy that I just... It was a punt, really. I didn't think it would work. Uh, Last year, we started swim lessons. And this was that 10-day intensive dunk you under the water and let's hope you survive swim class. And she went the first lesson and the swim instructor dunked her and she lost it. She got out of the pool, ran, running around the pool like a crazy person screaming, I'm never coming back. So I went home and I tried talking to her. What are you scared about? I tried everything I knew. And then I it just dawned on me. I went, what if I use a power pose to give her some power and an affirmation. But what affirmation could I possibly use to make this kid not scared? So I asked her, I said, who is your favorite Disney character or character that had to overcome something difficult? What's something that was really hard and someone was scared? And she said, Poppy, back to Trolls, of course. And I said, what did Poppy do? She said, she had to go through the woods and fight the Bergens. I said, okay. I said, was she scared? She said, yeah. I said, she'd do it anyway? She goes, she did. I said, is she strong and is she brave? And she said, she is. I said, awesome. You're Poppy. She goes, I'm what? I said, you're Poppy. I said, stand up. And she stood up. I said, put your hands on your hips. She put her hands on her hips, power pose. I said, okay, you feel good? She goes, yeah. I said, say this. I am Poppy, I can do anything. And she said, I am Poppy and I can do everything. I said, good, that's good enough. We're good. And she laughed and I said, you feel good? And she said, yeah. I said, so here's what we're going to do. Tomorrow, we're going to go to that swim class. You're going to put your hands on your hips. You're going to take a deep breath and you're going to say, I am Poppy, I can do everything. And you're going to get in that pool. So we got there. She put her hands on her hips. She said it. She was still scared. I said, do it again. She did it again. I said, do it again. She did it again. And she walked up to the pool. She did it again. Swim instructor looked at me like, what is going on? And she marched into that pool, dunked herself underwater, never had a problem again, never cried again. So now she uses it on her own. Whenever she's scared to do something, she will put her hands on her hips and do it. And I think the thing that we learned more than anything else is how to be consistent with this. And if you're consistent and you get them to practice, it will become a part of their life and they'll reproduce um, these uh, these actions naturally themselves. Okay, so that's it for today's show. We are going to recognize somebody on air 
for the fried date episode that leaves us a five-star review. And would it kill you to leave a five-star review? You get all this parenting advice. And what do I ask you to do? Oh my gosh. Just just go over to iTunes, leave a five-star review. That's all you got to do. Help us out. We want to grow this baby. Um, and if you do that, we will pick uh, whoever leaves us a five-star review. Just reference fried date in the review and we will call your name out live on the air. That's it, everybody. Have a great day. All right. Thanks for listening. If you love this episode and you know someone that needs some help in either stepping up their work hard game or their play hard game, it would mean the world to me if you shared this podcast with them to help me get this movement out there. So if you like what you heard, head on over to iTunes, take 30 seconds and leave me a five star review and I will be forever grateful. So until the next episode, excuses are over. It's time to live.